welcome to Daily Hope. My name is Ryan Pfeiffer, and we are in 1 Samuel chapter 31. It is the last chapter of 1 Samuel, and it is the last chapter in Saul's dynasty. Before we jump into the passage, I just want you to reflect for a minute. What do you hope your lasting legacy will be? What contribution and influence do you hope to have on people's lives around you that will outlive your life? Think about that as we go into chapter 31, verse 2. The Philistines were in hot pursuit of Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him critically. Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and run me through, or these uncircumcised fellows will come and run me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer was terrified and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. And when the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men died together that same day. This is a tragic moment where we see Saul come to a really sad ending. It's a significant moment and it has a significant lesson for us as tragic as it is. Ironically, Saul, who was anointed by God to deliver Israel from the Philistines, was ultimately killed by the Philistines and had his dynasty wiped out by them. Here's the lesson for us to draw from. When we lose touch with God in our life, we will fail to fulfill our destiny. Think about that for a moment. The converse is also true. No matter how hard our circumstances are, no matter how difficult it is to see our destiny in the cloud and the fog of our difficult circumstances, if we cling to God, God will fulfill his purposes for our life. And that's what we see going on in David's life. If on the one hand we see Saul with all the trappings of of leadership, he's a great king, he's tall, he's attractive, he has the, the worship and the adoration of all his people, Yet his life is coming to a tragic end and his his destiny is ultimately not fulfilled. Yet with David, we see his destiny about to break through. Even though he's in the wilderness, running for his life, going through trial after trial, and yet because he clinged to God, God fulfilled his destiny for him. What a powerful and important lesson to remember. Here's the sobering truth. Few Leaders finish well. But Dr. Bobby Clinton, or the late Dr. Bobby Clinton, who was a professor at Fuller, did a research project on 1,300 case studies on leadership. 50 of them were biblical, 100 were historical. And from all this research, he came out with some key insights. Number one, only one third of leaders finish well. That's a sobering truth. What keeps us from finishing well? Well, as we said, as we look at Saul, we realize by not clinging to God, we will fail to fulfill our destiny. But Dr. Clinton also brings tremendous insight into what leaders who finish well share in common. I don't know about you, but in my life, I have seen leaders not finish well. I've had mentors. Maybe there's been leaders in your life, pastors, political leaders, mentors, maybe your parents that didn't finish well. And you're wondering, God, how can I finish well, and not fall into the trap these other leaders have fallen into. So here we go. Six characteristics. Number one, they maintain a personal, vibrant relationship with God right up to the end of their life. Number two, they maintain a learning posture and can learn from various kinds of sources. They commit to being lifelong learners. It says in Proverbs that the wise are always adding to their wisdom. It also says that he who hates correction is a fool. Consider that for a moment. Number three, they manifest Christ's likeness in character as evidenced by the fruit of the Spirit in their lives. Character matters, and submitting to the character-shaping processes of God in our life really makes a difference. It's not just what we do or where we're going, it's how we get there and who we are in the process. Don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. Character matters in all leadership positions That's biblical truth. Number four, leaders who finish well live out truth in their lives so that convictions and the promises of God are seen to be real. They're not just talkers of God's truth. They don't just agree with God's truth, but they live it out and they obey it even sacrificially. Number five, they leave behind one 
or more ultimate contributions. They don't just see their life about investing in themselves, but about making a contribution and an impact on those around them. This father told me that he wanted to leave a legacy for his children that was different than what his father left for him. He wanted to leave a legacy of gentleness and calmness under pressure. Wow, what a powerful legacy to leave to your children. It's something his dad couldn't give him, but he wanted to give that to his kids. That father is going to finish well if he holds to that. Number six, leaders who finish well walk with a growing awareness of a sense of destiny. I want to just impart to you a sense of destiny with a word of prayer. In Proverbs 4.18, it says this, The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter to the full light of day. I want to pray over you right now. May your life be like the path of the righteous. May it be like the morning sun rising brighter all the days of your life. And may God impart to you a sense of destiny. And may it shine brighter through all your days. God bless you. Have a great week.